Hello, welcome back. In this episode of Pimp My Filter, we're going to be taking a look at quite a big canister filter. And this one is a first. It's from Sierra. I've never taken a look at a Sierra filter before, so I'm interested to get into it and see how it works. Okay, so this is the Sierra 400 with built-in UV. The UV is 5 watts. The total power consumption is 36 watts. The flow rate on it is 1100 litres per hour, which is approximately 290 US gallons per hour. And it's rated for tanks up to 400 litres. Now considering the size of this thing, for Sierra to say that it's suitable for tanks up to 400 litres or 105 US gallons, that seems entirely realistic. This is a pretty big filter. Now before we see what's in here, I must confess, I've actually already upgraded this one because all it came with is four coarse pads and they were in the top two trays with nothing in the bottom two trays. So I've already upgraded it. Okay, so this is the top. We've got our in and out. We've got our little priming rod there. That's actually stainless steel as well, so that's not gonna snap. We've got the on off switch for the UV light. This would normally have a clear plastic cover on. Unfortunately, that plastic cover is missing. That doesn't affect the, the workings of it though. And on the sides, we've got four clasps. And when we lift that off, we can see where the water comes in. It actually comes in where that primer is there and just pours out onto the top tray. It goes down through the trays and then rises up through this big hole here over the UV light and is sucked back out by the pump and returned to the tank. So in effect this filter works top to bottom. As I previously mentioned unfortunately all it came with was those coarse pads. I assume they are official pads because they are well cut and they are good quality, so they're going to go back with the filter. Ordinarily, I think this would have the coarse, medium, fine pad, and it would have something called Sierra Siparax, which is a ring media made out of sintered glass. The construction of it, unfortunately, it's got that big hole through the middle, so it's pretty much all aerobic, but it's made of really good materials. It does have a good structure. If only it was in like a pelletized form, it would be an excellent media. But as far as the ammonia and nitrite goes, it still is an excellent media. I don't have any here to show you, unfortunately. However, I will put a link to it in the video description if you want to check Sierra Siparax out, because as far as the first stage of filtration goes, well, first stage of biological filtration, which is the processing of ammonia and nitrite using the aerobic bacteria, it is one of the best. So check it out. Water goes in the top, pours on top of here. Ordinarily, it would pour on top of this flat coarse pad. Now I've swapped that out for a bumpy coarse pad. So in effect, it should hold more muck before it starts to spill over the sides. That's the idea of having a bumpy pad, you know, it instantly creates more contact surface area and we've replicated that underneath with a medium density pad again that's going to hold a lot of crap between there and here it basically creates pockets where the muck collects hopefully that'll give us a bit longer between clear outs and then underneath we've got a fine pad to catch all the fine muck before the water goes out the bottom of this tray and into the media trays I won't pull them all out, but in there we've got three pretty big media trays, each of which will easily hold 1.4 kilos of BioHome Ultimate. That's what we've used for this one because we're after creating a full cycle, which is supporting aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. Aerobic for processing ammonia and nitrite, anaerobic for processing nitrate. And I use this because I know roughly how much of this media it'll take to deliver a full cycle which is zero ammonia zero nitrite and low or no nitrate certainly a reduction in nitrate anyway depending on how much you use so generally it would be one kilo per 100 liters or for you guys in the us one kilo or 2.2 pounds for 26 us gallons for a normally stocked tank heavily stocked tank you can pretty much double the amount that you would need so that's it, three trays of really good media in there. 
and a tray of foams and a fine pad. That completes what we've got in there. I mean, now that's a pretty heavy filter. We've actually got four kilos of media in here, which is 8.8 .8 pounds for you guys in the US. You could possibly get another half a kilo or an extra pound in there. Um, if you packed it in a little bit more neatly, I tend to just tip it in, give it a shake, pat it down, and that does me, you know? So, yeah, a little bit more than four kilos you could get in there. The overall construction quality of this filter is actually very good. There's not really much that can go wrong with it. You know, all the, the fittings are plastic, but they're a good quality plastic. They're hinged well. These will come off if you need to replace them. Um, there's not really much can go wrong with it. And the trays are well made as well. They're a solid, you know, just a basic, but a solid construction. The seals between the trays are nice and thick. So you're gonna get almost no bypass there. You've got a nice seal around the top here that actually keeps the whole thing watertight. And all in all, we've basically got a no nonsense filter that works top to bottom and has a UV. There you go. Sierra have got this one bang on the money by claiming it'll be suitable for tanks up to 400 litres. We've easily got four kilos of media in there. One kilo per 100 litres. 400 litres. Perfect. Obviously, if you've got a heavily stocked tank, you can halve that recommendation. So in effect, this would be suitable for tanks up to 200 litres. So you had a, like a heavily stocked Malawi tank, goldfish tank, predator tank, something like that that has a lot of stock in. All in all, it's a good filter. It actually sits on quite big rubbers as well to keep it up and minimise vibration. Flow rate isn't huge on it, but flow rate isn't everything. As long as your filter is well set up with a coarse, medium and fine pad to remove all of the muck that you can see in the tank, and as long as it's got plenty of media to process the ammonia, nitrite and nitrate, it's pretty much all you need, you know? The surface of the tank should be getting disturbed for good gaseous exchange, but you don't need crazy flow rates. So that's pretty much it on this filter. That didn't take long, so I might as well just use these last few minutes just to address that point again about flow rate in filters and anaerobic bacteria, because I see a lot of people just regurgitating nonsense on YouTube and also on forums as well. I don't get involved with forums, but I see nonsense on there all the time. Basically saying that it is impossible to culture anaerobic bacteria in a canister filter. If you're using hard ceramic rings that aren't particularly porous, yes, that is true. The water is just flying over it, it's all aerobic. There's nowhere for the anaerobic bacteria to live. Basically, if you've got media in that's only catering to aerobic bacteria, the flow needs to be practically zero to culture any anaerobic bacteria for nitrate reduction. That's why these things are generally seen as nitrate factories. So if you've basically just got like cheap ceramic rings that are very hard and not very porous, or you've got plastic, which is a really hostile environment for bacteria, it's all gonna be aerobic. So to get anaerobic bacteria growing on or in those particular medias, you've gotta slow the flow down to a crawl. The actual water itself flowing around the media needs to be deoxygenated. By swapping crap media out and putting good media in that's porous and has a myriad of tunnels and little pockets, it doesn't really matter what the flow is because right down those tunnels and in those little pockets, the flow will be slow. The water will get deoxygenated as it gets down all those tunnels. So you're always gonna have little pockets of anaerobic bacteria. So when somebody tells you that it's impossible to culture anaerobic bacteria in a canister filter because of the flow, in effect, they're talking bollocks. Media choice is everything. So there you go, the Sierra 400 with UV. It's a nice, big, well-made filter. Flow rate isn't crazy, but flow rate isn't everything. Price of it is pretty decent as well. And actually the media that comes with these things, which is the Sierra Sipperax, which is the sintered glass ring, as far as what comes with a filter goes, uh, when comparing that to other manufacturers, it is one of the best. So even if you didn't want to swap it out, you know, if you weren't bothered about reducing nitrates and you just wanted to run with the stock media, 
this is a very very good choice certainly better than any crappy plastic media or you know hard ceramic rings or any of this cheap stuff the Sierra media is pretty good however as we're looking for a full cycle I swapped it to the bio home ultimate what you put on there is your choice this video was really just about showing you how this is constructed how the water flows through it and how it should be set up if you found it useful give it a thumbs up share it wherever you want and I'll see you in the next episode Oh, and I must thank Keith for sending me this. <laughs> I forgot to thank him at the beginning of this video. Thanks very much, Keith. I've wanted to have a look at one of these for a while, so thanks very much for sending it. I'll get it well packaged up, and you should get it back very soon.